Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the e-commerce series using Django. In this one, we'll get started working with the product creation view. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So let's get started. I'll begin by opening up my code editor and in the user admin app, you need to create a new forms py if you don't have that already. And in the forms py, we imported from Django, from Django import forms and also from core.models import products. Now we need to create a new add product form, add product form, add product form. And this should inherit from forms.model form, okay? And we need to create a class meta for this, passing the model that we want to interact with, in our case would be the product model, and also the fields that we need this model to have. So fields, should be equal to, if you want, you could put all the fields. If you want, you could still list out some particular fields that you want. Um, let me list out some particular fields that I want. So I want the title, let's duplicate this. I also want the image. I also want description. I want price and old price. Price and old price. I also want specifications. Do I have that field? Hold on, let me see. Do I have the specifications field? Yeah, I sure do have that field. So um, specification, take notes, this is old price. Don't mix that up. I also need type, type of product. I need stock count. And I also need the life status of the product. Let me see, do I have that, that field? life okay yeah i have that the life and for now i think that's pretty much everything that i need let me also pass in the mfd which is the manufacturer date uh, i also need tags i also need digital and finally category digital and then category all right so those are pretty much everything that i want now let's write the view to actually create the product. Open up your user admin views py. And there we need to write a new view. I'll define add product. And then we will call this one request and check if request.method is equal equal to post. Then what do we want to do? I will say form should be equal to add product form. Please import that. So let's import that at the top. Say from, from user admin dot from user admin dot forms import add product form. So over here we add product form and we're passing the requests dot post. That was to grab all the information that will be typed into the form, like the title, description, and all that. Then to grab the image, type request.files to grab the image. Now let's check if form.is underscore valid, which means all the information that were typed into the form was valid. Then let me create a new variable called new form. And I'll say form.save commit should be equal to false. This pretty much means we call the form, the new form, the actual form data that we have gotten and assign it to a variable new form. We are not yet saving to database because we want to add some more fields or fill out some more fields. So we can now say new form dot user field should be equal to the logged in user, which is request dot user. And for you to be able to save the many to many field, which is for the tags and things like that, Firstly, say new form dot save to save the title, description, image, and all that, and then to save the actual um, many to many field, which is the tags. You simply need to say form dot save m to m, okay, like this. So you save the many to many field, and when everything is done, let's redirect back to user admin. Redirect back to user admin dashboard page, okay. What if the form, what if the request method is not post? 
what do you want to do? Let's just render the form like that. So the form will be blank, all right? And finally, let's return the template. Return render, passing in a request. And I need to say user admin slash add product. Or you could even still call it this one here if you don't want to call it add dash product. It's up to you how you want to name it. Dot HTML. Okay. And finally, we need context so that we can pass that form to the template for more for further processing. So form. And then take the context and put it in here. So that means we need to create this new template called add products HTML. You can create that um, the template here. This is the template, this is the user admin. I'll create a new file and put that in. And now let's register this in the URL call. Okay, not this, but the URL user admin, okay? And this one should be add underscore products. So add products. And we also still need to add the same add products there. All right, so that is what we have. Now open up the products HTML and look for a link called create products, which is this one. Now we can put a URL there that goes to user admin add products. Okay, so after all this has been done, if you reload this page now and click on this button, you now see it takes us to a blank page. So now let's prefill the templates. Okay, so now to populate the templates, open up the add products HTML, take all the code that we have here and pretty much put it in the add products HTML. I've just gone a step further and added the let me indent this code so it looks okay. Do you remember this headers and things that we usually import? I've gone a step further and imported this for you guys. So we pretty much extended, loaded static, and we loaded humanize. So loading humanize will pretty much help us with things like um, adding in commas and you know performing some nice filters. Don't worry, you'll see what that does. And form.media over here pretty much helps us with CK editor, that is if you want to use it or not, and so on. And we have the block content. So if you get back here now and reload the page, you can see how this is looking. All good, right? So let's start changing up all those input fields over here to use the Django, Django form. The very first one on our list is product title. When you get rid of this, when you get rid of the product title, you will see that it's gone. But if you say, Okay, let me get back here. But if you say form.title and you reload this page, see, it shows fresh pair. But this is how it looks. Does this really look nice? My answer to that is no. We need to add a class called form control to it. And how do we do that? So I will open up my forms, forms py. And over here, I will say title should be equal to forms.character field. And for character field, I want to add a widget. So I'll say forms dot text input. And I'm adding this in because I want to add an attribute to this text input. So this is where you can now do things like add your, your placeholder. So you can say placeholder and you can say enter product title. And you could also add another one called class. And you could say something like form control form con true okay so adding those two like that restart your server let's see what we have all right and let's reload this page and can you see enter product title and it's looking good so this is what i want you guys to do for each and every one of the fields here i already have a snippet if you don't want to do this i already have a snippet that you could just copy and paste let me get that real quick so i i believe i should have one here um user admin forms py see i have this here already i'm gonna be leaving it for you guys and also if you have the source code i believe you should have all this so we exactly we pretty much did the same thing see we just added placeholder and classes to each and every one of them so using this now we can get back here and add all the other inputs that we need okay so i'll get back to add products html and there are a couple of things that I would want us to do before we even get started, you know, performing other operations. For example, for the errors, let's firstly write a conditional statement and say if form.errors. 
So while submitting the form, if any error occur, then we want to show that div with the alert danger. And we actually want to show the error message that occurred. So for that, say form dot errors. Okay. And after that, you should see that this will be gone. Let me see. See, that will be gone. Now, the only thing that we need to do is start adding up of every other field that we will be needing. For example, this is the description. You say form dot description. And now we should have a description show up over there. See, product description. So for selling price too. So, uh oh, let me take this instead and get rid of this, put it down here. So this would be price, do the same thing for this one. This would be old underscore price. Let's see if, if that's working. See, price, old price, all good. Currency, let's see, let's leave it as USD for now. Type should be product.type, I believe. That is what we have. So here, yeah, that should be form.type and you can fix the you can fix this also the stock should be form dot stock count stock count let's see if there is an issue all good all working as expected and life should be let me take this this should be product dot life let's see how long would this product leave okay manufactured by and that one is pretty much the Okay, let's just put it. Uh oh. This should be stock.mfd. Okay. Okay. So here we can now enter date and, you know, things like that. And also for the tags, instead of having this input show up here, I will get rid of that and show the tag here. So that should be form.tags. And let's see how it looks. See, tags showing up. Instead of having this checkbox here, just say form.digital so that you can al al always check this if it's a digital product or not. There you go, see it's working. And we also need the same thing for media. I will get back here and over here, I will say form.image. Let's see what we have. See, we can now select a new image and also Mm, for categories, instead of showing the select, you could just say form.category, form.category. Let's see what we have. See, categories showing up. All good, see that? I believe that is everything that we have, that we have here, right? Let's see, this form should have a method post and type multi parts from data so that you can submit an image. And do not forget to add a CSRF token to it. So after all that's done, let's try creating the new product. I will choose a file for this particular product. Um, I've got a couple of files here. Let me take this and let me say clothes for the file. Let me say a face cap or a hat, okay? And for product description, a white hat or face cap. Selling price is $12, code price was 15. Type is, you can add, you can add in whatever you want here. Um, material, stock, 14. This product can stay for up to a year. So I'll say 365 days, or you could just say one year. Manufacture date, one, two, two, one, two, one. Tags, then you could say cap, comma, hot and let's try creating this product now str object has no attribute get so where is this error coming from so this error should be coming from our views py let's get back to our code and open up user admin views py this should be return redirect okay and let's allow our code to reroll again you get back here Press F5 and hit continue to create. Okay. Did that create the product? Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, you go. See, a hat. It's created a new product for us, a hat. So that was pretty much it. As you can see, products are now being created. 
You can actually order these products from, you can say dot order by and let's order by minus ID. So we get from newest to oldest so that we can see the newest product at the top. See, now we have a hat. So that's it guys, it's working perfectly well as expected. In the next video, we will get started editing the product and that will be really nice. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. In the next one, we'll start editing the video and the upper one, we'll start working with deleting the video. If you're looking to set up a live e-commerce, a real e-commerce business, then I've got better templates for you. You can actually send a mail to deskfish at gmail.com and I'll be more than happy to help you out with a new e-commerce. That'll be it. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, my love, peace out.